Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, so just heading away again in the van. Um, we're heading to walk fine sort of direction. Um, plan this weekend is just mostly um, doing a bit of fishing and a bit of sort of coastal foraging. Mussels, wilts, cockles uh, and stuff like that. Um, weather's to be pretty decent, it's not to be roasting, but it's to be sunny and dry and uh, I take that every day of the week. So I'm going to head up there, it's Friday night now, um, don't really have much plans, going to get a bite to eat in the way and then just going to get pulled up and uh, just watch a bit of Netflix and stuff. So the uh, next you might see me might be tomorrow morning which will be Saturday, hopefully get some decent footage, uh, a bit of fishing, a bit of foraging, wee campfire, uh, cooking up a bite to eat and stuff as well. So stick around and we'll see what happens and see what we get up to tomorrow, the next nice set plan. We'll see how it goes, so keep watching and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. What's doing so? Just pulled up for the night. Just literally a car park, nowhere special, there's no scenery or anything like that. Just gonna stick Netflix on, have a quick beer, uh, just chill and then we'll get up in the morning, bit of breakfast before we head off to the bit that we're going. So nowhere special, so we'll just turn that off for the night and I'll catch up with you in the morning. Morning folks. It's about uh, 9 o'clock, so I've just got up and I've got breakfast in the go. Just making some pieces and sausage for me and the nephew. So I'm going to get these, uh, get the van tied up, get the dishes done, and then we're going to head over. It's a two minute drive to where we're going to be for the day, so I'm going to go over there. Low tide's about uh, half twelve, there or thereabouts. It's about 9 o'clock now, so I've got a wee bit of time yet, but I'd like to be there about an hour before. Just allows you to foggy the tide as it goes out. In your coastal foraging, you kind of want as much time as possible at low tide usually, because um, that's where a lot of the stuff can be. So that's the plan for the day, and next thing you should see hopefully will be uh, in a bit that we're going to be for the day. So catch up with you shortly. So we're now doing the shores of Loch Fine, just waiting on the tide unit. The tide's supposed to be about half twelve-ish, one o'clock, um, but it's about the back of ten now, and we're driving round and notice the tide's already out. A good bit more than I would have expected. That's actually happened the last couple of times I've been here as well. I use the BBC uh, weather page, it's got tide times and stuff on there. It's normally pretty alright. The last time I came I missed low tide because of it. So it seems as if it's out a wee bit, so just be careful if you're using that. So I'm going to just go down now to the low tide mark. And see what you can see. I'm sure you know we're saying good fine. So I'm just walking along the the foreshore. I'm just looking at the ground the whole time, um, just to see what I can see. I'm looking for walks, mussels, cockles, uh, anything else. That's pretty much everything that I would expect to find here. And I've just found my first two cockles, and I wanted to show you the difference um, and how that you sort of normally find them. So the first one I found. Literally just sat like that, quite exposed, not really hiding. Just check that it's not an empty shell or it doesn't open full of water. That's pretty straightforward, dead easy to find. But here's how you more commonly find them. So if you just look like this, sitting on its side, half buried. So normally I think they like to bury themselves actually just a bit under the sand. And this one's maybe just been caught out a wee bit uh, in terms of the tide unit. So that's normally the way you find the vast majority. And again, it's one of the things. Once you get your eye in a wee bit, um, you'll start to notice mer and mer them. So again, take this one, get a wee shake to get the sand off, check that it's full, and that's two decent sized cockles. They're a member of the clam family, um, they're dead sweet, and they're brilliant. So uh, aye, let's see what else we can find along the way. So I've got a couple of cockles in a bag now, and I've just came across my first mussel. So there's usually lots and lots more, so I think we're just starting to come up to them. I just wanted to show you how you can sort of expect to find these. And here, it's literally just sat uh, exposed, and it's a very, very good size. A couple of rocks attached, that's just its wee beard that's holding onto it. Um, look at the size of that compared to the mussels that you'd maybe get in a restaurant or something else. That's a key difference. The ones you get in a restaurant, they're going to be rope grown. And you get them, they're very, very good as well, but they can be quite small. Whereas the meats inside here are absolutely massive and in my opinion much better. Um, only thing you've got is because it's grown in this type of place, they can sometimes have a bit of grit in small stones, but it is relatively rare. And as long as you know what it is, then and you're not too squeamish, they're absolutely fine. But I've been eating them for years. Um, 
and I love them. So aye, I'm going to leave that one there. If I kind of kind of don't like it, I just see one. I don't really like taking it. I kind of like to if there's a patch, take a couple, leave a few. Again, that way it just keeps it sustainable. Basically, there's millions here. So again, even if I did take that one, it's not going to do too much harm. But it's kind of just the rule I like to sort of try and stick to. You come across a patch of the mussels. There you go. Again, they'll come usually with these rocks. Just pick them off the side. Look at the size of it. Again, I'm living amongst a decent patch, so I don't mind taking a couple. Try and just move on to the next one so that you're not picking too many if you want spot, but it's not to get a wee feeder on there. Van. got my fishing rod sorted, um, aye, I'm just going to go and have a couple of casts up and down the lock, don't really know what to expect, hopefully see if there's any mackerel about, it's a wee bit early for mackerel maybe, but we'll just see what there is, aye, I'm just going to maybe spend a couple of hours just going kind of up and down the shore, having a cast about and see what's there, so a nice sunny day, actually I might have to take off this uh, zipper shortly, be a wee bit warm, so I'll uh, keep you updated with how I go on if I catch anything at all. Catch up with you shortly. So just a very quick update. I'm absolutely buzzing. I've just uh, I've just caught a sea trout. It's uh, probably my biggest ever sea trout actually as well. And they put up an amazing fight. So I just want to get a very quick video um, just before I can get it put back in the water basically. So here you go. Lovely, probably a pound and a half there or thereabouts. So maybe a wee tiny bit bigger, but the fight they give is um, unbelievable. So, I'm going to get it back in the water. It's an amazing day, sun's still um, shining down, so I'm going to just keep fishing away and I'll keep these updated till we get on. So, I've got the fishing stuff put away and I'm going to come down and prepare the mussels that I picked earlier on. They're not like the same ones you buy in the shops because they're rope grown and then they're processed through machinery and stuff to make them as clean as possible. And you maybe just need to take a wee beard and stuff after them. Um, because these are just wild mussels, um, they've got a lot of gravel and grit and some barnacles and stuff, so. It's a lot more effort into it, but it's worth it because I think they're better, they're bigger, they taste nicer as well, and they'll be the freshest that you'll ever get if you pick them yourself. So, um, just going to prep them now, get them a wee sort of clean as much as possible in the water, and then I'm going to cook them up. So, I'll show you a wee bit of what I do when I'm preparing them. But I'm just going to keep them in this cool box. I've got a bit of fresh salt water in there as well. You can see I've got mussels, I've got some wilks. And I've also got some cockles. The cockles I'm going to keep until I get home the mora. The reason being is these live in the sand and quite often they'll have a lot of sand in them. So if you then cook them and eat them, that's obviously not the nicest thing in the world. So what I kind of tend to do is I'll keep them in water air night the night and that'll hopefully allow them to purge any sand that's in them um, out. So they'll be good as possible, and then I'll probably just cook them with some pasta in the morning, like a spaghetti vongole, which is one of my favourite dishes. The mussels will have a bit of grit in them sometimes, or sometimes the odd wee peril that you might not be used to, but it's not really that often. And what I'm going to do is just clean these barnacles off and give them a good rub down, just so that as little with the sort of grit or whatever gets in my, my sauce. I'm not that precious about it, to be honest. I know it's not going to be like a restaurant, um, but I, I'm just going to try and clean them up as much as a as much as I probably can and they should be absolutely amazing so that's what I'm gonna do now spend a wee bit of time doing that and then I'll show you me cooking them as well so all's a day when I'm cleaning them up is I'm just trying to get the majority of these barnacles off and give them a wee sort of rinse so a stone like this is very helpful you just press the barnacle into it a wee rub and it'll come off and I basically just repeat that way we all of them until a barnacle free, give them a wee rub. I normally bring a wee nail brush with me as well and give them a wee scrub into the wee crevices and stuff, but I did not, and it's really not that big a deal. It's not going to do me any harm, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to repeat that for the rest of them now. So I've got my muscles all clean, 
What I'm going to do is steam them open a wee bit first. I normally would do this in the sauce once it's cooked, but again, because they might have a bit of grit and stuff in it, I'm trying to get the juice out of them so that I can get rid of the gravel before putting it back in. So it's a wee bit back to front, but I've just got some coals on the go there. I'm going to just put a wee bit of water in. And that should just be enough for them to steam. I don't really want them to cook all the way through. I just want them to be steamed open. Washed up here. So we'll put them in. wee portion behind to have with my cockles the more so that'll do mate I'll put another wee bit of water in again I'm just trying to keep steam in the pot and then what I'm going to do is stick the lid on I'm just going to leave it for a bit as I say I just want them to steam open and then I'll come back and I'll get the rest of it sorted so the mussels have steamed open a wee bit now so I'm just going to add in a bit of oil And then I've already pre-chopped some leeks and some chorizo. So I'm just gonna get them in there. And I'm gonna let them just start frying up. What I want to happen is the chorizo to release all the fats and oils in it for the flavour. Once it's done that for a wee bit and it's cooked down slightly, I'm then going to put in the cider. And then once the cider's in, I'll put the mussels back in, give them a wee second to cook fully, stir them through, and then I'm going to eat them. So they've been cooking away for a couple of minutes, so the oil and that's starting to come out the chorizo. The leeks are all starting to wither down as well, so I'm now just going to add some cider. And again, that's just going to let all the flavours going together. It's also going to create mere steam. Once that comes up to the boil a wee bit, I'm then going to put the mussels back in, let them steam open fully because they're only like halfway cooked, and then eat them. That's pretty much it. The good thing is, you can just drink the rest of the cider as well. So, cheers. So, the mussels are ready now. Just steamed them and tossed them in the chorizo, leeks, and cider. I'm just going to serve them up and I'm going to sit and eat a lot of them. And Get that view at the same time. So many, they're falling off the plate. No harm. It's an empty shell anyway. And the uh, kind people at Askeval Rum have sent me a boat of the rum. It's made on the Isle of Rum with botanicals for there. One of the things it uses is the seaweed for there as well, so I figure. What better thing to have with my muscles by the sea? 
to try this for the first time, so I brought myself a nice wee glass. I figure I'll have a go with that while I'm having my muscles. I just wanted to show you the size of this muscle. Look at the size of that. It's absolutely huge. It is a monster. Look at it in my hand for comparison. So that's the difference you get. And again, dip it in a nice bit of sauce. That side on chorizo. The best bit is getting a crusty roll that I cooked in the van. Turn it open. And getting it dipped in the juices. Unbelievable. Yeah, so we've had dinner and we've now just got the fire started and we're going to just chill for the evening. It's really, really nice, really mild night. The sun's kind of went down behind the hills, but it's still not really cold. There's a slight breeze. It's probably quite good though, because if there was to be any midges, it would keep them away. I've not actually noticed any of the day, so, but there's been a steady breeze um, all day today, so don't actually know if there's been any midges, but Aye, that's it. We're pretty much just going to sit here by the fire for the night, sit and chill. We've got the Ask of Our Rum. Really, really nice. It's, um, it's a nice change for, for whiskey as well. It seems like, I'm not trying to kid on him, one of these wine guys after telly, but it, it tastes quite sort of fruity or floral, um, which is obviously all the botanicals and stuff that's in it. So um, I'm no a rum expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I know that it's good and I know that I'm enjoying it. Um, I don't know if it's made even better the fact that I'm sat by a fire, sat by the sea as well. So, um, aye, it's really good if you get a chance to try it, make sure you give it a go. Um, so, aye, that's it. I don't think we're going to do much else tonight at all. We're just going to sit here and, and chill, me and my nephew, and sit and probably talk some nonsense. So, I'll maybe get some shots of the light fading or a bit of the fire. But I'd imagine potentially the next you'll see is maybe in the morning morning. We're not entirely sure what we're going to do in the morning. I might get up and do another bit of fishing before I go, but more is Sunday, and again, reality kicks in, I've got work on Monday, so I need to get down the road and get my shirts ironed and get my lunches made and all the nonsense that you don't ever want today, you just want to sit here and sit by a campfire, so aye, no entirely sure yet, I'll take it easy, I'm not in a massive rush, so I might get a bit of fishing done depending on how the weather is, if it's like this, it might be a shame though to get a couple of casts in, so I'll catch up with you shortly and see what we're up to. Morning. So I've just come down, emptied the water out of the cool box that I'm keeping my cockles and stuff in and just put some fresh water in it. Don't really need to do that to be honest with you, they would be fine for the hour and a half trip home but I just wanted to purge as much of the sand that's in them out as possible before I cook them later on the night so it's not going to do them any harm and keeps them a wee bit fresher as well. I was going to do a bit more fishing today and to be honest it's a really good day for it as well but I just can't be bothered. Um, had a wee bit of a lazy morning, got the uh, breakfast ready, then tidied the van up, came down and done that and I just kind of want to get home, it's good having a campfire and stuff, I love it, it's one of my favourite things to sit and day, but it just leaves you feeling really grubby the next day as well, the smell of smoke and stuff like that, so I'm going to get myself down the road, get myself showered and then just get myself ready for the week, get my lunches sorted, um, have my uh, spaghetti and uh, clams and stuff, so I'll maybe stick a wee bit of footage into that later on. Um, and that's it. So I again listen, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe it. Um, I always just think that's absolutely cringeworthy, but apparently it does help with the channel and stuff, so I'd appreciate it. I know the last two videos have been kind of foraging and stuff like that. That's no all the channel's going to be. The, the channel's just going to be whatever it is I'm doing that weekend, and that just happens to be what I've been doing the last couple of weekends. Um, I kind of just love getting out and about in Scotland, um, whatever it happens to be. It is fishing, it is spear fishing, it is foraging. I enjoy a bit of hill walking. I'm definitely no like I'm in row bagger or anything, although I definitely want to do that this year as well. 
it's just whatever I'm up to. There'll be restaurants, there'll be hotels, accommodation, a bit of everything. Basically, if you go to my Instagram channel, which is discovering underscore Scotland, you kind of get a flavour for the stuff that I get up to on there. And this channel is just meant to provide a bit more sort of detail behind each trip rather than just maybe a couple of photos that get uploaded to there basically so that's what it's been so far and there'll be much more foraging and stuff but it's not going to just be limited to that as well so let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to show you when about Scotland and I'll see what I can do for you but until I catch up with you next time thanks very much and I'll see you on the next one